Hi, I'm Jenna Koning. And I'm Becky Richards. And we're from CPRI, the Child and Parent Resource Institute located in London, Ontario, Canada. Our topic today was tick, 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 boom, understanding reactive rage. Here are some of the key takeaways. It's important for children and youth to have the language to understand about what's going on with them and the disorders that they have. In the break shop clinic, we think it's really important that kids have a concrete way to understand their leaky breaks. So disorders such as Tourette syndrome, OCD, and ADHD, we refer to as leaky breaks. Much like a car has a braking system to help it stop, humans have a braking system as well, and our braking system is located in our brain. When we have leaky breaks, it makes it hard to stop those parts of ourselves. This helps kids and teens understand a little bit more about what's going on with them. Part of changing perceptions is really educating other people on leaky breaks. Often, these disorders and their symptoms can appear very behavioral, and it's the misperception of these disorders that actually do more damage to children and youth than the disorders themselves ever could. So we think it's really important that we give people a new lens, a, just a new way to see things so that we can have a new way to do things as well. Our presentation introduced everybody to their own frustration beaker. We use the frustration beaker analogy to really help youth understand their reactive rage. Often rage can feel like it comes out of nowhere and we go from zero to a hundred in five seconds flat. What the frustration beaker does is it gives us the information that we all have a frustration beaker, whether we have Tourette or not. And everybody's beaker is in fact the same size. Sometimes it feels like little Johnny that has Tourette and all the other leaky break disorders must have a much smaller beaker because he's overflowing and raging way more often. But really what we look at is Johnny is dealing with a whole lot more stuff than other kids might be dealing with. And we also look at none of us look good when our beakers are overflowing or we're raging. There are three key elements that we teach when we're talking about our frustration beaker. The first thing that we look at is what fills your beaker. And what fills my beaker is gonna be very different than what fills somebody else's beaker. So understanding how those different leaky breaks, such as a leaky break over our movements and sounds, which are ticks or Tourette, or our leaky break over our thoughts when we have OCD, can really contribute to a filling beaker. Next, we look at what are our own personal early warning signs? How do I know that my beaker's filling? And again, it's gonna be very different for each person. Just like cars have warning signs, such as a gas light or a blinker or a check engine sign, people have early warning signs too. Maybe we're talking faster, our facial expression is changing, or we're pacing, or our hands are clenched in fists. Those are all keys that my frustration beaker is filling. And finally, we wanna know what are some strategies that we can do to empty our beaker, which is also very individualized. Things like going for a walk, listening to music, playing with a sensory item, doing some progressive muscle relaxation, or even talking to a friend or going for a drive. So here are the three main takeaways again. It's important for children and youth to have the language to understand about what's going on with them and the disorders that they have. Our presentation introduced everybody to their own frustration beaker. There are three key elements that we teach when we're talking about our frustration beaker. One of the questions that came up during our presentation and a question we get a lot in our clinic is, what do I do when my child is raging? Nothing seems to work. Unfortunately, when rage is happening, there's not a whole lot we can do. Really, at that point, it's about battening down the hatches and keeping everyone safe. What we really want to focus on are those proactive strategies, like those things that we suggested, understanding your beaker fillers and your early warning signs so that we can prevent the rage. Like Jenna said, during a rage, there's not a whole lot you can do, but afterwards you can come together, go through that material again and figure out what are we going to change and possibly do better next time. We would recommend that you check out the self-management toolbox for more educational videos regarding frustration beakers, strategies to use, and lots of helpful resources which are free for anybody who's interested. We would also like all the youth and adults, parents and educators 
at this year's annual conference to really become TS ambassadors and educate to change perceptions on how these disorders can often be viewed.